How about we start with, is, have students in particular any uh, comments or are they too quiet to say anything at this point? Or is there some fight that has to be taken out between the faculty? Because uh, he's making some strong statements here. Some of you have been in these courses and have been exposed to this. What's, what are people's reactions and questions? If not students, then let's start with. Uh, I always intimidate students. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Are the teachers here from the, uh, this material to, to stand up for this? It almost looks like I invited David to beat up on causal models. And I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that's what he was going to be talking about. No, you were not. No, yeah. You were saying the diagrams are useful, parametric models are useful. Go back to basics of weights as well and see what you get. I think that was a very important point. Yeah. Tom. Tom not, I'm not going to defend causal modeling, but I will defend causal model thinking just as I will defend bootstrapping even if you never do it. Having the discussion about what bootstrap you would do is very, what is the h naught bootstrap is incredibly difficult, incredibly important. And likewise, I think principal strata, potential outcomes, even if you never commit the act, <laughs> Discussing the diagrams and thinking about assumptions can help formulate what question you really want to answer, even though I generally bail out to parametric models. Okay. Um, David, I, uh, take the mic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I, and I, I, I use graphical models enormously to clarify my thinking. Um, I, I can't say that I, 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 as I say, I don't myself find models which involve counterfactuals terribly helpful. But then, as, as I think I said as a disclaimer, that's probably just the way I think about things. And, and I'm not denying that there are perhaps people who, who do find this helpful. Oh, well, there obviously are, because it, it has. So, so, yes, I think, I suppose I, I didn't really deny that. I think. They are good ideas, and they can be taken too far. <laughs> yeah, T Tina? Yeah. But, I mean, statistical analysis is statistical analysis is statistical analysis. I mean, isn't the issue, I mean, from my perspective, and maybe I'm addressing it to the wrong person, the use of the word causal? I mean, doesn't that get up people's noses? I mean, isn't that the issue? Because it's a statistical method, which is slightly more complicated like than others. I don't, like cause, I don't like calling an estimate a causal effect. So I guess. Who are we? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, for for the people who've been away from the department a while, the alumni, this is Robert Platt. Uh, and I, I teach a course in causal inference in the department, and so I'm I'm somewhat invested in the in the term. Um, so I'm going to take a step back from what you said, Tina, and say I object too to the term causal models in the context of statistics. I think a causal model, David's doodle on the, on, the, uh, on the slide, which people would call a directed acyclic graph or a causal diagram, is a causal model. A statistical model can, we can use a statistical model to infer causation. And we do that all the time. If you do a regression model and you say beta equals Two, so e to the beta is whatever, the odds ratio is whatever, therefore, if you eat more carrots, you will live longer. You have done causal inference, whether you want to call it that or not. I'm agreeing with you at that point. I'm so am I. So, to put these other models in a different class, they're a different kind of model, they do different things, but they only move the numbers around. The word causal inference, causal inference is what we do when we're thinking 
after we move the numbers around. And you can do that with a logistic regression model, with a t-test in a randomized trial, with a survivor average causal effect model, whatever. To call the models causal, I have a problem with. To call the inference causal, that's my business, your business, whoever's doing the study's business. So I guess we're agreeing. We're agreeing. <laughs> but to put the models in a special box and say we shouldn't call those models causal is hard for me to say because people use logistic regression all the time and they think they're doing causal, they're, they think they're making causal claims there too. They're just not calling it causal logistic regression. That's right. And uh, and I entirely agree, but, uh, and, but they don't call a regression coefficient a causal effect. I think they, they might, do. N I think they might discuss in the, description, in the discussion of the paper the causal interpretation of that regression coefficient, but the regression coefficient is, is called the regression coefficient. It's not called something like, in this case, the survivor average causal effect, which is, which is over the top. <laughs> Well, I, I have, I mean, I could go on for 20 minutes about my problems with the idea of a survivor average I causal know, effect, I, I, look, just because I, I think that's a funny question to ask. You know, if you didn't die, would you have been sick? Yeah. <laughs> is, is, a, is a strange question. But, but I guess I do disagree that people, I think people do say causal effect with regard to a regression coefficient all the time. Yeah, the other, I did have a... Regression is misused as well. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it's used causally, and it's used all the time with intermediate variables in the regression. And all, all yeah. The I did have a, a question as well, or a, a comment. Yeah. On the distinction between confounding and selection bias and selection bias that's in, uh, selection bias introduced by death, which you're calling confounding. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, that I hadn't thought of that before now, but it is a nice distinction that I've, I've tried to teach the students in the class to think about things that, are, that biases, I call confounding a bias, but co confounding is a bias that exists in nature. Yes, that's the, that's the president of the day. Whereas, Selection or other biases are things that you impose on the data. Exactly, yeah. And I, I think that's pretty close to compatible with Hernan's definition, but I'm not. I, well, it's, it's, it might be. It's a long time since I read the paper. <laughs> it's, it's not compatible with the way people are using Hernan's definition. That's probably fair. <laughs> I, I have a question myself to pose to you, David. Where, yeah. So when we were on a different one than this, uh, not about uh, longitudinal measurements, but rather in competing risk for prostate cancer versus death from other causes, where we made a three-ply Kaplan-Meier type curve to show which you were going to die of or whether you're going to survive, I had a big argument with Mietnin about it because he wanted sort of uh, to know, he, he plans his life only if he's going to be alive, and he denies the probability that he will die of anything else. So he wants to know what's happening. If he can survive to this point, what about the disease? And I said, that's wishful thinking. I think you are going to die like everybody else, no matter who you are. <laughs> uh, do you, have, you, have you come across any of that thinking, or is that special to Mietnin, <laughs> who is not here to defend himself? <laughs> You see what I'm getting at? He says, I want to make plans, and I want to be with my grandchildren, or whatever, but I'm making plans assuming I'm alive. He doesn't even consider the possibility that he would not be. And I said, well, that's fine and good, but... I uh, believe it of Ollie. Okay, but only of Ollie, huh? Uh, I haven't come across that at all. Okay. Uh, but then, uh, yeah. I said, look, my, my, as I said, my, my dad was in the insurance industry. So, uh, so we, yeah. obviously we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't count countenance that such people exist in our family. Uh, so, uh, I haven't come across that before, okay. but I right. I've spent many many a year, many a happy dinner trying to understand uh, what's going on in Ollie's mind, and a lot of it is well worth understanding. Yes, yeah, I 
I agree. But it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. Other questions? Uh, please, sorry. Fine. Yeah, thank you, Jake Hoffman. Um, so uh, I, I guess on the, the, the particular question you raised in response to Robert's question about explicitly calling the survivor leverage causal effect a causal effect, I think the reason that the causal inference community uses that terminology is not just the sheer chutzpah of saying we're going to call it a causal effect, but rather because they delineate exactly what the assumptions are that would grant it an interpretation as a causal effect. So they're explicit about those assumptions, whereas the use of regression coefficient is not explicit about those assumptions. It's left to be something completely subjective. You objected to some of those specific assumptions that would grant that a causal interpretation. But the advantage of this setup is that you can back off from those assumptions and you can say, if I'm not willing to make this independence assumption that grants, that, that allows me to get this point estimate, I can get bounds. Okay. And, and, and so if you don't like that independence assumption, you can get bounds on the survivor average causal effect as opposed to the point estimate. Yeah, but, uh, yeah rarely do people do it. But uh, look, my, my problem with it is, yes, of course, any model can be used as a causal model almost, uh, providing the assumptions are, uh, are stated. Um, and yes, the, the assumptions have to be stated explicitly. But in the actual terminology of, say, a, survey, a survival average causal effect, in those four words, the assumptions are not explicit. That, that's my point. That well, in the words uh, regression coefficient, no, the but assumption of... Uh, a regression coefficient doesn't say causal. It, but it the, also the, doesn't the, involve the, all the, the assumptions this, that would make it a valid the, estimator for whatever the, thing the you're trying to estimate. The discussion about whether a regression coefficient is a causal relationship goes on in the discussion of the results of the paper. It doesn't go in, in, in the word a regression coefficient. It, it would That's be a very long point. term if it had to include all of the... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I, I was being... I, I was trying to... Uh, the <laughs> Thank you. Any <laughs> other questions? Other questions? And, you know, I mean, now we're unfortunately competing. Jill, what? Yeah. Uh, What's the official timing? Uh, close? Is it now or after? Are we competing with the time for the bar or what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, well, it's. Uh, it's, it's a tribute to, to, to David, then, that, uh, that he's kept everybody away from the bar for this long. So, uh, oh, and I want my book back, please, because, <laughs> because I want to get David's signature on the real worn one, not the electronic version. All right, thanks. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks. That's a good job.